TV was a Swedish company that built elevators. It made hydraulic elevators that had a mysterious feel to them, enough to leave them well known today as favorites among both elevator technicians and elevator YouTubers across Sweden. How, when and why did this manufacturer come to be? We are going to take a closer look at DEV in this episode of Elevator Documentary. It all began in 1924 when Mr. Dahlberg and Algot Nilsson, later Vibke, founded bilaktiebolaget Dahlberg och Vibke in Engelholm, Sweden. It was a car dealership that initially sold and serviced cars from Ford. The company quickly shortened to the founders' initials D and V, or DV, as it was pronounced in Swedish. They became known as BILDV, the name they later adopted for their company when they opened a second shop in Storgatan 2, Helsingborg, in 1927. At that time, they also began to focus on selling Volvo cars instead of Ford. Algot Wibke was creative in his way of solving problems, especially when it came to making it easier for his employees to service cars. Part of that involved his 1929 development of the first Pynamic hydraulic car lift. This invention led to an expansion as Bildiv took over a workshop company in Munke Jungby in 1930, allowing them to produce car lifts in larger quantities. A few years later, the biggest project yet was created. They created a car hotel that opened in 1938, comprised of hydraulic elevators that transported cars between the floors inside. The company started to expand, and in order to focus on more local efforts, its departments were split into separate companies known as BDV i Engelholm AB, BDV i Helsingborg AB, and BDV i Munke Jungby AB, in 1934, and in 1939 they also opened a new company on Uxtorget in central Stockholm, Bildeve i Stockholm AB. In 1944, a special kind of order came from a bakery in Sundbyberg. They wanted a hydraulic lifting table that could transport their products from their stores in the basement. Deva created a modified car lift purpose-built for this purpose and it later developed into coffin elevators for searchers and crematoriums. In the following year, a descent barrier was patented which prevented the elevators from sinking down involuntarily. That expanded to large-scale elevator manufacturing beginning in 1949. These elevators were in ground hydraulic with telescopic expansion that worked in a strict order, allowing movements as high as 7 meters up and as fast as 0.25 meters per second from previously 0.05 meters per second. In 1954, the first simple piston that was placed next to the car instead of below it was developed making Algot realize that a proper manufacturing plant would be needed for elevator manufacturing. It was built in Alvesta in 1956 and subsequently all future manufacturing was focused here. In the following year, the first 68 elevators were delivered from the new workshop in Alvesta. The company grew at a steady pace over the years with both innovation and more people. In 1960, Deve Hissa i Alvesta AB employed 65 people and delivered 126 elevators across Sweden, at the same time as they patented the double telescopic pistons with synchronized expansion and retraction. Just two years later, the single telescopic Howlis hydraulic piston was approved for mass production. And in 1963, a new ventilation system was developed that allowed the elevators to move faster than 0.25 meters per second. Finally, the descent barrier was improved upon in 1965 with a hydraulic dampened buffer. This resulted in the first Diva elevators that the company was most known for. Manufacturing increased, and in 1970, the company employed 122 people. Turn out 
12.4 million Switch Chrono and delivered 308 one elevators, including 30 that were exported abroad. Algot Wiebke had been running these companies for 50 years when he retired in 1974 and passed ownership over to three managers. Carl Ivan Larsson, Stig Monson and Melke Nulande. The first order of business was to take over a local elevator firm, namely Skarborgs His Service AB. They also developed their own elevator fixtures, TKID and it were patent protected in 1976 and became the standard use on elevators moving forward. The new management decided to only focus on the car dealerships in Engelholm and Helsingborg and sold all the elevator related manufacturing to six employees in Alvesta and two employees in Stockholm. The new companies became Dev Hissar i Alvesta AB and Dev Hissar i Stockholm AB while the car dealership retained the name Bildeve AB. By then, Deva Elevators had 208 employees, turned over 72.6 million kronor and delivered 847 elevators, where 247 were exported abroad with the Stockholm branch alone selling 400 elevators that previous year. Sadly, Catastrophe struck in the early 1980s as the Bildeves manufacturing workshop in Bunker Jungby caught on fire and was destroyed. Despite Bildeve in Bunker Jungby building a new workshop just outside the town, it was a severe expense and ultimately they went bankrupt in 1983. The other branches and departments of Deve took over the bankrupt company and a new branch was created as Deve Productor AB. They eventually grew so large that the Stockholm branch moved the next year from Linnégatan 17 in central Stockholm to freshly built offices in Dandry, where they employed 297 people and had a turnover of 137 million kronor a year. They were listed on the OTC Financial Markets Exchange in Stockholm and the employees were given the option to buy shares of the companies. Just two years later, in 1986, a new branch office opened in Adelaide in Australia, perhaps because one of the company's employees moved there. It was during the 80s that they also developed their own digital controllers that replaced the real ones from the 60s and pretty much simulated the real controller's behavior. Based on the 885 processor from Intel, the controller was named the LPC-801. They also modernized the design of the TKID and by 1988, their turnover had reached a staggering 223 million kroner. Schindler, a Swiss elevator company, was established in the Swedish market since 1955 as Schlieren Schindler AB and was looking to expand in the late 1980s. Just two years earlier, they rebranded themselves from Schlieren to Schindler in order to fit into the modern company in Switzerland and began to deliver their products into the Swedish market. Schindler saw a golden opportunity when the management of Dev Hissa announced that they were looking to sell off the company. It seems pretty natural for Schindler to take over since Dev and Schindler had an earlier business partnership. Through the Norwegian daughter company Rebbe Schindler, continue to export Deva elevators to the Norwegian market rather than delivering Schindler's own version. And Schindler's automatic doors could often be found on some Deva elevators that were purpose-built in hospitals and similar buildings. Schindler had promised that Deva elevators would work in the same way under their ownership for many years and considered integrating Deva elevator products into Schindler's own product portfolio across the European market. Ultimately, Deva was the larger of the two, with a manufacturing rate of 1,300 elevators per year in Alvesta and in Rinka Jumbi, with 400 exported across Europe and to Australia. Deva had a market share of 25% of the Swedish elevator market in 1990, while Schindler only had 5% market share, but Deva needed financial support. The acquisition was completed in 1990, leaving a combined workforce of 600 people employed in the merged company, known as Deve Schindler AB. 
the office in Dandrid combined with Schindler's office in Vestberga and together moved into new office space on Dalvägen 1 in Solna. The future looked bright, but it wasn't to be that way for very long. It had been a hot summer in Sweden when the government was gathered here in Harpsund. Marknadsräntorna steg, börsen sjönk och vad alla väntade på var att ekonomin skulle vända uppåt igen. Det var en slags bluffpåker, spelet gick vidare. En vecka senare slog Riksbanken till med otroliga 500 procent, sedan valutautflödet återigen hade tagit fart. Det här var en marginalräntehöjning som skulle göra det dyrt för de kortsiktiga spekulanterna. Det skulle belöna de som trodde på kronan. Och vi fick en omedelbar respons i marknaden. På 40 minuter så hade vi mycket betydande inflöde av valuta. Sweden was hit with a financial crisis in 1991 as the housing bubble deflated, resulting in a severe credit crunch and widespread bank insolvency. This affected the entire Swedish property market, everything from commercial buildings to houses and apartments. As one building and landlord company after another fell in value and several banks were even closed, Sweden had to reform their economic and political policies drastically during the 90s to take control. This obviously impacted Dev Schindler because fewer new buildings met new orders of elevators were reduced drastically. Dev Schindler had to lay off a bunch of employees and restructure itself. At the peak, sales had dropped by 85% between 1990 and 1998, and they eventually laid off 70% of the workforce, keeping only 180 employees. Dewe Schindle had to act quickly to stay afloat. They moved back to Dandrin and Westberga in 1992, and sold all of Dewe's hydraulic product range to GMV SPA, who in turn opened a branch in Alvesta as GMV Sweden AV. In 1993, the Alvesta works shut down and the Swedish office moved to Dandrid and the storage to Munkajungby. Local manufacturing in Munkajungby shut down in 1999 and the remains of DVS were entirely shut down in 2005 as the storage was moved to Dandrid and to Berlin in Germany. Sales moved to Malmö and the archive to Klippa. The large layover and the sell-offs of Dewe's old parts resulted in several new elevator companies being founded in the 90s. Alt His AV took over the manufacturing plant in Alvesta. His Craft Stockholm and His Craft Norland was founded by former Dewe Schindler employees, and Hydroware was founded by one of Dewe's engineers, Shell Johansson, in 1998. All of these companies, as well as GMV Sweden, still exist today as independent elevator companies, except for Hiscraft Stockholm, which merged with his group in 2020. I have considered Hydra to be the spiritual successor of DEV. After all, Shell Johansson and his engineers developed a new hydraulic system centered around the Dynaheat dynamic valve which could regulate the flow of hydraulic oil and therefore regulate the speed of the hydraulic elevator, creating a smoother start and stop. This was originally developed when they worked for DEV and later in Schindler, but when presented to the main office in Epicon in Switzerland, Schindler hadn't been interested because they were already experimenting with machine room-less solutions of elevators, such as the Schindler mobile prototype, and they eventually launched the Schindler Smart MRL in 1998 as their first MRL traction element. Shell, together with a team of nine engineers, left David Schindler to form Hydroware and finish off a YLB product centered around the Dynaheed valve. Part of the deal with Hardware was an exclusivity deal to only deliver these hydraulics to Schindler for the coming 10 years, but eventually it was opened up to the open market. At first, these hydraulic pumps were controlled by other engineer controllers, but eventually Hardware developed a controller of their own and launched the Hydro Elite range of products. And what happened to the Schindler? They changed their name to Schindler Hiss and maintained a Swiss office in Tandrit, but they actually never recovered. In 2011, they only had 246 employees and turned over 354 billion kronor. 
Today they have about 250 employees and a turnover of about 500 billion crew. And Bildeve, the dealership that was split in 1980, they still exist running their business as usual in Helsingborg, growing a second-hand car market all across Sweden as well as selling brand new cars from Volvo, Maxus, Renault and Dacia, at least according to their website. So yeah, you have reached the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed my very first documentary video. This is like the pilot episode. Um, it took me quite a while to collect all the information. It was really hard to collect the information about the DML with the company. And uh, to assemble it all into this documentary type video. If you liked it, then make sure to leave a like. If you have any feedback, then don't be afraid to comment in the comment section below so I can improve in my future episodes. I might return someday with an, another different elevator company as well. So make sure to subscribe and follow me on social media and then perhaps we see each other in the future. Uh -huh.